everyone, welcome back to the Half Soybean channel. My name is Sharon and today we are going to be making this jewelry dress. I'm so excited. You guys know that I love making my own clothes, but I'm also always on the hunt for good quality, sustainable jewelry that I can pair with my me made outfits. I have to admit that when I was younger, I was a little bit of a jewelry hoarder and I would have all this jewelry, but they weren't the best quality, so they would break easily or irritate my skin. But that's been a lesson learned for me. I know that now I only want to invest in pieces that I know is going to last me a really really long time. And that's where Ana Luisa comes in so thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. I have to say they have really cute and awesome quality pieces that you can really tell have been crafted with love and care. But this high quality doesn't mean that you have to break the bank because they say no to luxury markups and they have prices starting at $39 and I feel like that is such a good price for the quality that they offer. They also say no to traditional gold mining which is actually super harmful for the environment and also the workers in that industry. Instead they are recycling old computer parts, old mobile phone parts and even old jewelry to recreate them into the beautiful pieces in their new collection. I absolutely love this because I really really believe that we should be recycling wherever possible. They're also extremely conscious of any carbon emissions that they might be making as a business so they are 100% committed to being carbon neutral and this is throughout their entire business procedures so it starts from sourcing their raw materials all the way to how they dispose of their waste and I feel like this is so important for businesses to consider in this day and age. But if you are looking to snap up some gifts early this year make sure to check out their Black Friday sale they have some really great pieces at affordable prices and you might want to grab something for yourself or your family or your friends um, there is a link down below in the description box where you can check out their limited offers right now once again thank you so much they have sent me some pieces that I think will go really well with the strawberry dress that I'm making I will be wearing them throughout the video so let me know which one is your favorite for now I am just really excited to get started on this dress. So I've got like six meters of strawberry fabric and I don't know for some reason tulle is so expensive in Australia or just like the shops that I'm going to. So I didn't get that much. I think I also have about six meters of tulle. So at this point I'm thinking do I have enough to make several layers of circle skirts or do I just have to go like the rectangle skirt and just like gather the top of it i don't know you might think i'm an idiot for doing this but the strawberry fabric actually took a little bit of time to arrive so i got a bit a bit antsy i got a little bit impatient and i went to the store to pre pick up some pink tool but when it arrived when it arrived guys i realized that they were completely different types of pink this is like um such a bright it's not fluorescent i don't know how to describe this but it's so bright then i had to go back and buy this lighter tool i don't know i'm just creating extra work for myself <laughs> by buying fabric multiple times but i'm still gonna stick the darker pink in like in between the layers and everything this is the original pink fabric for the inside that i picked up but when i layered it with the tool like so i just feel like that's too light i prefer when i layered it with a darker pink lining fabric here's the original here is a new lining fabric that i picked up i'm just gonna have to use this for another project i feel like that looks a lot better just I don't know. Have a close look at this strawberry fabric glitter and if you compare it to the original Lyrica Matoshi dress you can definitely tell the glitter particles are a completely different size and they look a lot bigger and more sparkly on her dress compared to the one that I got online. So there is a difference. I uh, literally do not understand how people cut all this tool by themselves i pretty much decided that it's way too complicated to try to cut circle skirts by myself jokes i did end up doing the circle skirts because i got my mom to help me for the fabric the lining circle skirt ended up being a little bit big even though i used the correct measurements because it's a stretchy fabric this could be something for you to note it's really hot today guys like i don't know if that's gonna focus 37 degrees 
<sighs> the width of the strawberry fabric wasn't large enough to create a circle skirt so instead I cut a rectangle that was about 28 inches long and 3 meters wide. From 5 meters of pink tulle I also got 3 circle skirts. At this point, I've got one full circle skirt layer, three full circle skirt tool layers, two rectangular pieces of the strawberry tool fabric, and they are both three meters wide. And I'm going to double that up and gather it and attach it as the final layer on the top of the skirt. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. We are back with the basic two dart bodice piece and I'm just gonna use this as a basis to cut out the bodice for the strawberry dress as well. I'm telling you, just draft it up once. There's like a really great set of blog instructions somewhere. I'm gonna link that down below as well. And all you need to do is just follow that, make something that fits you perfectly and you can keep using it over and over and over again. However, because we do have a stretch knit fabric for the lining, I don't think we're going to have to do any darts because it's very form fitting and I don't really see a point of making any darts for this. I cut out my bodice pieces in the lining fabric. And then using those, I cut out my strawberry tool. The front bodice has one base layer of strawberry tool, and then I grabbed a larger rectangular piece and started pinning pleats into them. So this is two layers of strawberry fabric on the front bodice. Then I steamed the pleats into place. I am going to baste around the edge of the two front bodice pieces to keep the pleats in place and also so that I can trim the excess fabric on the ends of the ends and like on the shoulder hole armhole and also like the neckline. I basted all the layers together around the outer edge. And then cut off the excess of the pleat layer to fit around the lining fabric. Right now I'm actually going through the strawberry dress tag on Instagram right now. How is it that I cannot find one single proper back view of the back of the dress? I am completely second guessing myself now because I don't even know what the back of the dress looks like. Okay right, I found... oops but her hair's covering it and here is a quick update i'm pretty happy with how the front looks so we'll move on to the back i don't know if i want to do another layer of the strawberry tool for the back pieces just because it looks a little bit sparse but I don't know I think I'm just gonna baste down the edges for now and then if it looks too sparse I can always go back and fix it here we are I honestly did not expect to get so far today but here is the front and the back and I actually think I'm gonna go ahead right now and um, sew the shoulder and the side seams together. And then I did the sleeve pieces. Hello, it is day two today. Yesterday I got up to the sleeves, except I ran into some issues with it. I ended up unpicking them, so I'm gonna restart the sleeves anyway. Anyway, I've got some new earrings on. These ones have the boyfriend's seal of approval. He said he really likes these ones. What do you think? <laughs> Let's get straight into sewing for the whole day again today. I got the sleeves pinned together like this. I'm gonna just give it a bit of a baste under the machine so it's not like falling apart. But I've also got this tool that I've gathered. I've just cut a strip and gathered and I'm gonna try and attach it to the bottom of the sleeve. So I just have the ruffles facing upwards, right sides together and just sew along that bottom edge. 
And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sew a bias tape right along this edge here so that we can create a channel for the elastic to sit through. I'm just gonna sew this bias on top of all the layers that are flipping up. So that includes the ruffle tool layer and the strawberry and the pink lining fabric. And then once we sew that on, I'm thinking I can just give any parts that stick out a bit of a trim. I gave the tool a trim down so only an inch is hanging off the bottom. I cannot right now. There is a blackout, a power out, and there's no electricity right now. And obviously that means I can't use my sewing machine. Oh my goodness. I really have to get this done. What the hell? I thought the whole building was having a power out, but for some reason the power outlets in the balcony still work. So I'm actually going to take all my stuff outside and sew on the balcony because there's no power in the house, in the apartment buildings, like within the units right now. So that's what I'm going to do. The length I am doing to get this dress finished is actually crazy. It's, it was like 37 degrees yesterday, but it's actually so cold today. It's back down to like 20 something. Thing. So uh, I'm gonna get changed into something warmer and head outside. <laughs> um, I've got, um, I'm bringing all the furniture out one by one. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to speak out here to the camera because it is so windy and echoey and I don't think the sound quality is gonna be okay. So I'm gonna voice over everything that I'm doing outside. Okay, so using a safety pin, put the elastic into the bias tape channel. Once that's done, just sew down the armpit seam of the sleeve. Also gather the top with a basting stitch and this is what the sleeve should look like. And then repeat that with the other sleeve. The good thing about working outside was there was ample space to wheel around. And here is a quick update. It's time to gather my rectangular piece of strawberry tool. I put a gathering stitch along the top. Then you want to gather this to match the circumference of your waist. And here's what it looks like pinned to the mannequin. Nothing's sewn together yet. So then I went and basted all the skirt layers together. I cut out some tool strips for the neckline and you just want to gather these. Then I pin them to the bodice. These run all the way from the front to the back neckline in one long strip. Then sew them down. Because they're a little flippy, just give a top stitch around the edge of the bodice and you should be good to go. At this point, I'm honestly freezing and still waiting for the electricity, but apparently it was coming back on around at 6pm, so I had to endure. She's cold, hungry, and a little bit broke. Then we are attaching the sleeve to the bodice. You know, not having my sewing machine turn on early in the day got me imagining all sorts of terrifying things, you know, it made me panic a little bit and I was momentarily picturing myself as the main character of an apocalyptic movie. All I want to do is sew. All I want to do is make this strawberry dress but there is no electricity for my machine to run and I have to go on this long and dangerous adventure to find a generator so I can finally plug in my machine. I don't know why my mind went there but it was scary. Okay, it's coming together. I'm attaching the bodice to the skirt, just pinning right sides together and sewing down. You know, there's definitely room to make the inside more professional, but in the interest of time, I just ran all the raw edges with the overlocker. Okay, the electricity is back. Thank God for electricity, honestly. I made these tool ties to go around the bodice, but I mean, I... Looking at this now, I don't know why I'm going ahead with it because it obviously looks so bad and you can hardly see the ties at all. But I think I was just like really rushing to get this done. But uh, that didn't do any good for me because I ended up having to change it. But since I didn't film that twice, this is how you do it. You just pin it to the bodice and sew it down. Then I put an invisible zipper down the back. Ha! 
Hi everyone, it is day three today. I can honestly say that as the dress is reaching its finish line, my well-being is going down. It's like an inverse relationship going on. Yesterday was an absolute uh, mess. There was a blackout and even though I was tired, I just kept trying to push myself to finish. And guess what happens when you do that? You just keep making dumb mistakes. Even though yesterday I put on the ties and I put on the invisible zipper, I am in the process of redoing them because I didn't like the way that it looked. And then I have to put in the bottom ruffle hem and then I think it'll be finally over. And people are saying how $500 is expensive for this dress, but honest to God, I wouldn't even be shocked if the price suddenly rises to a thousand dollars or something because it's genuinely so much work making this. I am actually shocked that it's only $500. Whilst that might not be affordable to everyone, I definitely think it's, it's, that's a bargain for the work that's going into this, honestly. But yes, I am wearing some earrings to make myself look a bit more put together. But let's go, let's finish this thing. I fixed the ties. I'm really happy with the way that they are looking. I think this looks a lot better than the tool that I did last night. And then I've also put in the invisible zipper at the back. Had to use a white one because I broke my pink one. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, I don't know if it's my building. No, it's not my building. I think the next door neighbor building is having a fire evacuation. Oh my god, why is like everything? <laughs> crazy. Okay, I have these tool strips and I am going to gather them. It is a last stretch guys. Whilst pinning first is not necessary, I did this just to make sure I had enough tool um because I only had a small amount of the light colored tool. Right, um, then I just sewed it down and I was finally finished. My god, I am so relieved. Here is the final look. Okay, I'm actually so shocked with how well this turned out. I have a little bit of extra strawberry fabric left, so stay tuned to see what I make with it. Even though it was so much work, it's definitely rewarding. I think I might keep making fancy things until Christmas just to get into that festive spirit. Let me know what you think and also don't forget to check out Ana Luisa's Black Friday sale. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in the next video.